bro. I need some space. It's been a while. Um, I finished my GR11 through hike and I wanted to make a follow-up video to my gear video that I made before the trail just to comment on some of the gear that I have not tested before or uh, I tested a little bit more deeply now so that I can actually say something about it. Um, yeah, so let's go right in. In case you haven't already checked it out, uh, I posted a video about the hike, like just a small, like a short film out of all the footage I recorded on trail. So feel free to check it out. Okay, anyway, so um, let's go to the gear. Uh, this is my pack that you already know. It does look a little bit different now. Clearly got some damage. Oh, sorry for the noise. I think there'll be lots of noise in this video. Okay, so let's start um, with the backpack. So the Gosman Gear Mariposa, I really liked it is very comfortable to carry and I never had any problems with my shoulders or my hips. The padding is really nice. Yeah, so I really like the comfort of the pack, but there's something that I don't like and that is the durability of the fabric. So yeah, uh, this pack has now around 2000 kilometers. I did take it for some via ferradas and some scrambling, climbing and... Uh, yeah, well, the pack took some damage. <laughs> Especially the mesh outer pocket has some holes that I fixed already, uh, but there's more and more coming up, which I think, I mean, it's a mesh pocket, right? So it's not very durable. Um, but what I was really annoyed by is that even these pockets have like holes and cuts and the hip pockets have cuts, even the main compartment has a hole, two holes in the bottom, which I think is the most inconvenient spot to have a hole. And so either I'm not really able to take care of ultralight gear or this is just really delicate. So I think good carrying comfort, but not so good durability. Uh, I am gonna switch to a Hyperlite Mountain Gear pack for my next through hike which has a bit of a thicker material because I know the kind of stuff that I do, also climbing, not just walking, I might need a bit more, yeah, protection. But yeah, so much about the pack. One thing that was also new was the tent. Now I can really show it because now I have it. Uh, it's the Gossam Gear The One shelter and I really liked it. Uh, it's very light, um, it's very spacious for one person tent. I am really tall and I never felt like I didn't have enough space. So I think that was really good. I can sit up straight in it and I have enough time to move around, pack all my gear if it's raining outside and change my clothing, everything. So I feel like that's a very good uh, part about the tent. Then uh, compared to other tents, I feel like in this one, there's more condensation building up in the morning. So I found my tent to be wetter than, for example, my friend's duplex. So I don't know if that was just in my head, but I felt like my tent was notably wetter than his. Um, but that's just like a minor... Well, is it actually a problem? I don't know. Because I dried the tent every day anyway in the sun. So not really a big problem. And considering that this was half of the price, I think if you can live with that, <laughs> I can recommend it, I would say. I would probably buy it again. Yeah, there is one small hole in the tent floor, which I don't know how I got it in there. Um, apparently, I'm just very rough on my gear, but I fixed it with tenacious tape and uh, it's such a small hole that I think it doesn't have a big impact anyway. And this tent has been with me for 1000 kilometers and some backpacking trips in Washington. So I think that's okay, right? I feel like that's okay. We can live with this. Um, the sleeping bag that I brought, the Rap Mythic, 
uh, I'm not gonna take it out now because it's in the bottom of the pack. I was very happy with the warmth. Even when it was cold, I felt very comfortable in it. And for me, the mummy style, like the very narrow uh, foot box was no problem. I actually really liked it. Um, the only thing that I did not like was that the fabric very often got stuck in the zipper. And I was just like, why do you make such a good ultralight sleeping bag, but then you can't open it at night without putting your headlamp on or being super, super careful. And I did rip a small hole in the fabric by pulling open the zipper and the fabric got stuck in there. So I had to fix that with Kinesha tape. And I have to be very, very uh, careful to not um, yeah, cause any damage just by opening it. Other than that, it was so comfortable, it is very light, and um, I really like it. But I think the zipper could use some work. <laughs> um, the Thermarest Neo Air sleeping pad, I liked, but I think it also had a small hole that I didn't find yet, but whenever I woke up, the air was almost gone. Not so bad that I couldn't sleep anymore, but it was definitely notably. So I, I think I've decided for the next time to go with a closed cell form pad, just because I like to throw it down on the ground and not worry about anything. I have also on this trip discovered my love for cowboy camping, which I was always too afraid to do, but I really enjoy just throwing down the mat, sleeping on it and not having to set up a tent. And if you have a delicate Neo Air, you need to be careful where to throw it because you can't just throw it on rocks or where, wherever there's stuff that can uh, puncture it. So I did like it. For this trip, which was a summer trip, I didn't need the R value that much. It was, well, there was not actual cold, so I could easily go with something that's less insulating. Um, but I think for a winter trip, this is a perfect sleeping pad, just a little bit overkill for this one. I was very happy with my clothing choices. Uh, as you can see, I don't have the same shirt anymore because the one that I started with got some holes in the back by friction of the backpack. And so I got a new one, I bought it along the trail. It's also a merino wool shirt, nothing special. I did not start with the ultra shoes that I said in the video I would start with for two reasons. First of all, after I have worn them for quite some time on my trip in Washington before, I felt like I didn't have enough support in them or because I have narrow feet, I felt like there's too much space and not enough foot. So I went with my shoe of choice. This is actually my eighth pair of this shoe and it is the La Sportiva Bushido. They certainly, you can see, they took some damage too. Um, yeah, but I really like them and I think I will start the next trail with these. Um, they don't have a wide toe box and they don't have the zero drop, but they work very well for me. And actually it's, out of all the trail runners I've tried, this is the best one for me. So if you have narrow feet, you might give them a try. So what else do we have? Um, something I added to my setup was flip-flops and <laughs> bought them along the trail and I was so happy to have them. Uh, good purchase, worth the wait. Yeah, I really like them. Something I don't have much to say about is my cooking setup. Uh, well, other than this thing is falling apart, but I was very happy with this setup even though in the end of the trail I didn't cook anymore because it was so hot and I didn't want to have hot food. And then, uh, yeah, I just ate cold or dry stuff and I didn't need it anymore. But in the beginning, I really enjoyed cooking with it. And I think that the pot size is perfect. The stove does an amazing job. So I bring this again. My lifesaver on the trail. I don't know if I mentioned it in the first video was this black roll. I got an inflammation in my tibialis anterior, which caused me a lot of 
pain in my right foot and this thing uh, made me recover on trail and I could go on even though I thought oh my god I can't walk anymore but this 10 grams well worth <laughs> worth it um, let's take a look inside the pack oh yeah the pillow I really liked I added this to my setup just this year and I'm very happy that I brought it My sleeping bag liner with my Neo Air in there. Um, the sleeping bag liner was a very good thing to bring. I was thinking about not bringing it, but then I'm so glad that I did because first of all, it was very often too hot to use the sleeping bag. So I was just sleeping in the liner. And for me, it is hard to sleep without having some kind of blanket or anything around me. So it was very nice to just go into this, uh, it's a silk uh, liner. It was very nice to have that. And also, when I was sweating because it was so hot, I could, yeah, protect my sleeping bag from getting very dirty because I don't want to wash it so often. So this was really, really a good thing to bring. I'm very glad that I did. And also, it, I, it made me uh, pack my sleeping pad like this. I, I, I have it like that in my pack and then I just put it in the liner so at least in my head, it's not that prone to being punctured in the pack, even though there shouldn't be anything sharp in there, but you never know. My rain jacket, the Outdoor Research Helium, I was happy with it. I used it a few times and I have to say that I was wet every time, but not because of the rain, because of me sweating in my jacket. So yeah, um, if you don't sweat as much as I do, you might have a more objective <laughs> opinion on a rain jacket but yeah it definitely did not keep me from getting wet but um i could tell i was not as wet as i would have been if i was just with a shirt in the rain so i guess that's a plus <laughs> uh i think i'm not gonna comment too much on clothing because uh, this is very personal and yeah i can just say i like liked most of my clothing. I really liked the down jacket. I have the Montbell Superior, Montbell Superior down parka and I was very happy about this because it weighs nothing and um, it was never really cold but I had a few nights where it was around freezing and I was very happy that I had this even though in the beginning I was like oh my god you're probably never gonna wear this but I'm happy that I brought it. One thing that I never used is my gloves. I never needed gloves, but you never know if you're in the mountains. So better have it <laughs> than not have it. So yeah, these were kind of unnecessary, but I think I'd bring them again just in case. Yeah, this is the sleeping bag. We already talked about it. I will continue using it because I have it. <laughs> A new addition to my setup that was not in the first video is this fanny pack by Kodopaxi that I bought in Washington mainly because I like the colors. Yeah, that is the reason. And it has like a 1.5 liter capacity, weighs like almost nothing and so I just throw all kinds of stuff in there like my headlamp, my spoon. Oh, this spoon was a very good purchase, also got in Washington. It's the Tox Titanium Spoon with a polished bowl. And oh my god, this thing is so good. I think I will have a hard time eating with forks again. I have not yet used a fork since I'm back. Well, we will see. Yeah, my headlamp, honestly, not so happy with it. Because it's only a battery, like it only works with batteries and uh, I wish it had like a hybrid mode so you can put in the, the how do you call it, the lithium ion battery or the battery batteries. <laughs> and for some reason, something in the electronic is broken because very often I have to open it, put the batteries back in and sometimes it just stops glowing. <laughs> so that was kind of annoying. So I think. I would switch this one out. I don't know if it's my fault, maybe it got wet or something. I don't know what happened to it, but um, 
yeah, honestly not very happy, but I think it's not your fault. I think that's mostly it. There's nothing really that uh, that's left. Maybe the maybe my ground sheet I can mention. I used the I think it's called polycryo ground sheet. It's just a very thin plastic, and yeah, it weighs nothing. It's just plastic, and it did a good job. It's still in a good condition. Like I can use it again for probably another through hike. There is, I think there's one very tiny hole, but I will just fix it with duct tape and then it's good to go for another hike. Also, the Nylofilm pack liner that I have in the Mariposa, in here, did also a very good job. I never had problems with moisture or my stuff getting wet, even though it was hailing and raining, um, nothing got wet. So my setup worked pretty well, I think. I can recommend it. The uh, the Nylofilm liner is obviously not as durable as like a real dry bag, but it weighs nothing and it's not broken. So it's pretty durable for just being a plastic bag. Uh, I can, I can recommend it. So, oh yeah. And the thing that's on my head, I think I had this sun head before in the first video and I switched to this mainly for the reason that I thought this is very cute. And that's all. But I really liked it. It's a light color, so it doesn't absorb too much heat. I don't need so much shade in my neck because my hair is covering everything. So that was really nice. I really like this thing and I will continue wearing it maybe every day because now I'm so used to seeing myself with this hat. This is now really it, I think. Um, I hope uh, the video helped you a little bit if you're into gear or whatever. <laughs> Even if you're not, I hope that you had some entertainment. Um, yeah, maybe... Feel free to check out the other stuff on my channel. I'm not a YouTuber, I just do this because I think it's fun and I have nothing to do. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> There's so much stuff to do, I just don't want to do it. Well, anyway, um, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and leave a thumbs up if you liked it.